Hello everyone. I recently had a question from a student who was puzzled by some data uh, he was examining from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. What puzzled him was he saw that in one period of time, the number of unemployed people went up, but the unemployment rate went down. Now you would expect those two numbers to move in tandem uh, in the same direction, and that's typically the case. Uh, because after all, the unemployment rate simply measures the percentage of the labor force that cannot find work, uh, the number of unemployed people. Uh, but once in a while, those two numbers can diverge. And to better understand that, we'll look at the equation that the Bureau of Labor Statistics uses to calculate the unemployment rate. To do that, I'm going to bring up my chalkboard. So let's just bring that up. And we're going to look at the equation used to calculate the unemployment rate. So we've got the uh, unemployment rate. So I'm just going to call that the U rate. And that's going to be the number uh, of unemployed people divided by the labor force. Now, again, the labor force are all of the people who have jobs and all of the people uh, who are actively seeking jobs, the unemployed. Um, so let's uh, look at the actual data, latest data and let's calculate the unemployment rate for ourselves. Now to do that, I'm going to go to the, uh, bring up the Federal Reserve economic data. And, and I have, what I have graphed here are two sets of data. I've got the red line up top here, that's the labor force. And the bottom line, the blue line, is the unemployment rate. And you can see the latest data right here for November uh, 2020. We've got the unemployed people at 10,735,000 and the labor force at 160,467,000. So let's uh, calculate it, plug in the, that information in that in a calculator, and let's see what we come up with. So I've got my calculator right here. And remember, just so we know, the, the number of unemployed people uh, was 10,735,000. And the labor force was 160 million, uh, 467,000. So now, if I plug that in the calculator, let me do that right now. So we've got 10 million, uh, 7335 for the numerator divided by 160 million was 160 467 and that's going to equal now this is in decimal form let's put it in percentage form by simply multiplying it by 100 multiply that by um, 100 and we we get an unemployment rate of roughly 6.7 percent so that's going to be um let me let me take off my calculator here so that's going to be 6.7 percent now let's look at the data for, on the bureau of labor statistics website to see if that's indeed the correct correct one so i'm going to go to the bls now here's the bureau of labor statistics website and if i scroll down you can see where it says latest numbers. You got the unemployment rate for November 2020, and look, 6.7%. And that's exactly the number we see right here. Now, this explains why, uh, in a particular month, what if you have a situation where there's no change in the number of, un number of unemployed people, but people leave the labor force? If this drops and this stays the same, you could see uh, that this one will also drop. Excuse me. <laughs> if the numerator goes down, this is going to go increase. So the unemployment rate could increase even though there is no change in the number of unemployed people. Uh, that's because you had a change in the denominator, which is the labor force. Now, there are times where this will fall but this will fall even more. 
So even though you've got a drop in the number of unemployed people, if this falls by more than that, this number can increase. So whenever you see a change in the unemployment rate, you've got to ask yourself, what caused that change? Was it a change in the number of unemployed people or was it a change in the labor force? And that could explain why there could be a divergence between this number and this number. Okay, that's all for now.